Two changes in the back row. Reese Ruddock for Scott Fardy and Josh van der Fleer coming back for the first time since March. Ross Byrne back at 10. World Player of the Year, Johnny Sexton on the bench. Yes, and Dave there, Carney man. in for his brother, Rob. Um, Mike Adamson is the man in charge. This is the 99th meeting since this fixture became a regular on the sporting calendar back in 1946. Leinster have won 50 to Munster's 43. The stage is set. The cast of characters assembled, the plot full of twists, and the script, as always, impossible to predict. This is Leinster versus Munster at the RDS in the semi-final. Once more onto the breach, dear friends, once more. And away go Munster through Conor Murray, back up to halfway. We expect the opening few tussles of this game to be played at the typically frantic and frenetic pace. Ryan gets his first little carry, and so too Devon Toner. Quick service from the Leinster scrum half, McGrath and Tyg Furlong, who scored a try on his 100th appearance in Newcastle last weekend. Nice to see Josh van der Fleer back into the thick of the action. He's the kind of player who doesn't need a warm-up game. He's passed all the protocols and exacting measures that Leinster insist on, having come back from a groin injury, and he's straight back into the fray. Jack Conan. Again, he was impressive at times last week. Gary Ringrose will have felt he didn't have one of his better games in Newcastle. He'd be keen to impress and put that behind him today. Sean Cronin driven back in the tackle. There's Ross Byrne. Very important that Ross Byrne has the kind of game he's had against Munster in recent times. That was very flat to Van Clear. Well read by two, if not three, Munster tackle. defenders. Outstretched arm of the referee as Leinster look to make progress out on that far side with Lowe and back inside it comes to Dave Carney and all the way back we go but what a start that was from the team in blue Liam Cullen and Gordon Darcy with me today well Conor we were we learned last night from uh, the form in the table can influence but this fixture goes much much deeper where history has its part to play there's so many subplots Munster caught the kick off uh, the Munster scrum half decided to keep it on play and next thing Leinster's build and build the phases it's a huge strategy huge tactic from Leinster and they're getting the reward of a possible three points great opener for Leinster a statement of intent and a typically physical run from James Lowe, a man who has stamped his imprint all over this fixture. Good and bad. Tactically, Gordon, um, obviously it's a massive decision with the, the out half selection this week. We don't know fully why, why Sexton wasn't picked and why Byrne was, but that said, what do you expect Byrne to do? How, how is he going to combat against the, the, the very strong rush red jerseys defence that they brought in? Yeah, I think we'll get a, we'll, we'll get a good look at that. But I think the, the kicking game that he brings, those, that high line speed that we can see Munster in already, they're flooding that third, fourth, fifth defender channel. Um, I'm looking for a really, really um, expansive or fast line speed at, at there which is going to leave space in around the field and no better man than this man lining up the kick to go for it to expose that. This to settle the nerves and set the tone and raise the blue flags around the RDS. And with his first attempt of the afternoon, Ross Fern, the Leinster fly half, is very assured, full of conviction. And it's the defending champions who lead the semi-final in the early stages. Three minutes in, three points to the good. I wonder, was that a tactic uh, when Conor Murray received that kick-off to keep the ball in play? But they got I think Munster need to play the game on the other side of the field. The ball was knocked on from James Ryan in the air. back first and it was knocked on before he regathered. Knock on. 37th meeting in this competition. Leinster with 22 wins to Munster's 14. Munster have won only three of 16 visits to Dublin, though, and not since 2008. Okay, start left. I see an instant kickoff from, uh, from Munster there with Joey Carberry and uh, getting up for a little bit of luck for that because when you go up and your tactic is to slap it back, and you can see the Leinster players having been a little bit. Uh, I suppose I have the benefit of playing Saracens last week. You see Gary Ringrose in that position to go. You know, if you're going, if you want to go up, you want to slap it back. There's a 50-50 chance that one of our guys can be in, in there. 
And for you can see the, uh, the monster, monster backs lined up, three of them in behind the, behind the scrum. Th uh, three very, very attack-minded uh, individuals there as well. Barbary Earls and Hilly poised off the back of this scrummage. And it's at the feet of Arno Bocha. Murray now, he goes to Carberry. Will there be a switch back inside where Earls was loitering? Instead, they come in off that right-hand flank. Quicker ball for Murray now. It's a penalty coming here for Munster as they carry it up towards the 22 on the first little flash point. No surprise to see it's that man. James Lowe. Well, Connor Murray arrived at the breakdown as the scrum half. It doesn't matter what numbers on your back, but he was the scrum half in that instance. And he's free to play that ball without being impinged. A great reward for a, a pretty cool play. You, you spotted it, Gordon, in, in, uh, before it happened. But to see uh, Farrell getting the ball as he did, running at Leinster defenders, is pretty good. Like, looking at that, Conor Murray's entitled to play that ball without being interfered because he's not part of the breakdown. Yeah, you can see James Lowe just trying to get in. He wants to, you can see that little bit of niggle is still there, which is, which is uh, going to add that extra little spice to the game. Um, and it's good, good, good to have it as long as it doesn't boil over. Um, but you're absolutely right, Liam. When you see the players in behind the scrum like that, you know, once you get that, once you get that uh, strong platform to go for it, Chris Farrell out in the out in the 15, coming at an angle, coming at pace, gets you up and it sets you over, it sets you and gets you on the front foot. Slightly more difficult kick and test this for Joey Carberry off the kicking tee, his first of the afternoon, to try and repost from his former teammate, but he struck it really, really well, Carberry. Dissects the uprights, and it's a three-point apiece game, six minutes into the contest. You can hardly call a kickoff a set piece, but in, a, in essence, it, it is a set piece. Munster made the absolute most of their kickoff, and to get the three points reward so quickly is a brilliant, brilliant start for them also. Yeah. This long restart from Burnt on into that far corner. Colt. Six and a half minutes in at this stage in the game in December down in Common Park. It had kicked off royally. Finan Reacherly, who was central to that, is on the bench, by the way, for Munster. No Billy Holland today in the late change, in case you missed that. Part of Munster's exit is conscious of those three Leinster jerseys in the backfield, so the kicking option is a bit more limited for them. So they're going to carry, and they're also playing into the wind as well. A double whammy. Stay. Yeah, probably for uh, viewers at home, they're not seeing that, that the wind has picked up substantially since we uh, since we started. We can see Connor Murray's box kick there, just drifting nicely into the touchline. I can see Connor getting the most out of that wind. You see the touch touch flag there, highlighting it. Um, but he's keeping that ball in around the, the in around the five meter the line and letting the wind do the work. So an opportunity for. Sean Cronin will keep an eye on the big battles around the park all afternoon. Cronin against Niall Scannell, one of the interesting ones, not to mention Ross Byrne and Joey Carberry, and perhaps the uh, the two back rows. All the way over the top of Devin Toner. Furlong couldn't get his hands on it. it. Looked like it went forward, and it did. No! That was a that's a disappointing outcome for Leinster. They did a six-man line out and it Conan out midfield, obviously a pre-ordained move. Should we should we watch this and uh, not talk rugby for own? Well I said the back row battle might be interesting and uh, Well he ain't the back row, but he's certainly an enforcer of line. I think he brings enormous muscle aggression, that kind of dirty type of aggression. I don't mean that in a legal sense, but just getting in the faces of the opposition. Tyke Byrne is someone they're going to be very, very aware of. That guy actually gets an awful lot of line-out steals. He's a line-out target himself. We've got nine line-out steals this season so far in the competition. Good stop, good but just disappointing again. from the point of view, you hinted at it, Connor. The hooker slot from an Ireland point of view is open. We're seeing two top-class internationals playing today. Are they going to step up into that position? Are they going to fight? Who's going to be number two? And most importantly, who's going to be number one for Ireland? Focus well, Colin, perhaps just allowing a little bit too much for the ever increasing breeze that's kicked up here around the RDS. Five. Not his best delivery. Set. Hold. From that knock on the ball with Connor Murray. And it's a monster penalty. It's drum time here being wheeled around in the view of Mike Adamson. Not a popular decision, as you might expect from the Lancer faithful around us here in the stands. 
he's simply saying that Keane Healy in his uh, exuberance gets outside uh, John Ryan and uh, gives a picture to the referee so he has to stay scrummaging square he actually got his hips out and gives a picture to the referee standing right there inside him and it's a, it's a relatively cheap penalty that said Leinster will feel pretty pretty good about that scrum in terms of dominance so an opportunity for Scannell who's uh, delivered well from touch this season 94% and he's picked out the captain Omani. And then it's Healy hitting the line with a good angle. Good pick up from John Ryan. On it goes to Tagburn. This is promising from a Munster point of view. Back against the green comes Connor Murray into CJ Stander. Tackle! Burn again. Ten minutes in, three points apiece. First side of that Leinster 22 for Munster who are charging forward in big numbers with big carries. Carberry, oh he's away almost, Carberry. Gary Ringrose got to him just in the nick of time. On it goes from Klein. Tackle coming in from Conan. Murray again, Scannell. Conway was in a good position. And here they go with Farrell. Oh, it's been turned over by Hanshaw. Picked up now by Jack Conan, great work from the Leinster inside centre. Use it! And up and high it goes from McGrath. Keith Earls is under this one. This is the type of game we hoped we'd get 10 minutes in. Big turnover from Robbie Henshaw. Big moment in the game just as Munster looked to kind of sink their teeth into Leinster inside that 22. But here they come again. Earls. Tackled by Healy. Devon Toner there too. Clean quick ball for Connor Murray. Burn went low. Ryan there to assist. They're calling for numbers over on that far side. Leinster Ross Byrne principally wants a little bit of help over there. Was that forward? Here's Conway. Moving through the gears. And the intercept then from Conan as they look to pick out Ty Burn. What a passage of play this is from both sides. Cronin. Tackle. Frantic stuff, breathless stuff from both teams. Stay. McCraw is well protected. Back they go to Byrne, who is charged Everybody's out. On Everyone's on side. Conan's free to play it. Five meters outside the 22. So much happening off the ball as well as you might expect. Little tussles and collisions all over the place. Ringrose goes to ground. Only a few meters outside that Leinster 22. In comes the clear out from John Klein. McCraw waits. Hoists up the box kick, it'll hang in the breeze, which is blowing into his face. Difficult one to take, it looked to go back off Connor Murray, I think, and here's Carberry under pressure. Did well. Stay. The ball is there for the Munster scrum half. Taken on by Scannell. Huge physicality, 12 minutes in. Use Neither it. of these sides will take a backward step, it'll all be left out there at the end of the afternoon. Hanging, swirling ball, well watched by Larmer, good feed as well. Couldn't quite get away from, I think it was Peter Omani, he just got a hand to his ankles. Here's Conan. Bright start to the game from the Leinster number eight. It was he who took that intercept pass as well. And here's Ringrose, and Ringrose sliding through two or three Leinster, Munster forwards rather. Great stuff from the Leinster outside centre. Furlong, good hands from the tight head prop and they shifted through the second row to James Ryan. Penalty coming here on the 10 metre line. Wide it goes from Larmer. Van der Fleer to low. The captain Ruddock. Great carry from Ruddock now and they're very much on the front foot here with the penalty advantage. Leinster inside the Munster 22. Ball has been in play for an age it seems. Conan again. Toner waits. Low is there. Tackle by Stander. Advantage over for the offside. Advantage is over now, says Mike Adamson. McGraw will have to play it. Furlong again. Advantage is over. On the latch was James Ryan. Conan has carried a huge amount of ball inside the opening 14 minutes. Ryan is the option. Van der Fleer is there as always. Bota in defence. And now Larmer. Larmer and Ringrosen. Leinster, a lot of Leinster's big ball players are 
showing what they can do inside the opening quarter of an hour here. Still though, it remains three points apiece. Burn. Dave Carney had to just adjust and almost left it behind him, but he did well. No hands! This Leinster team, despite Stay. last week's fatiguing performance against Saracens, looking pretty sharp here. Furlong. Ryan again. Scannell with the challenge. Burn goes a little bit deeper. Low. Almost losing his shorts again as he did no. last week. And Paul looks to have uh, been bundled into touch over on that far side eventually. Well, where do you start, Gordon? Where do you start? There's so many talking points in that last three, four, five minutes. But Gary Ringrose spotting uh, that the two players defending him, one was Kilcoyne and one was Botha. Stepping off the outside of the foot, the acceleration, and then just the acceleration. The lead players in behind him, you can see it here now, you can see King Ringrose, and that's the, the follow through on the tackle, is it from Conor Murray leaving his teammates out to dry there by breaking that defensive channel, leaves it, leaves it, you don't need to offer Gary, uh, Gary Ringrose a second opportunity to take a gap okay. like that, I'll and Leinster boys, just goes 60 metres, go, go down the go down the end of the field, and Munster give away a penalty to go back in, and Leinster keep going yeah. after it again and again and again, and just can't yeah. squeeze anything else out of it. But he mightn't have known exactly who the forwards were, but he would have been aware that there was forwards in the midfield. He was, he was lucky there was a prop in, a, in that sense, and he exposed it. There was enough space being left to him to attack. He mightn't have known them, identified them, but he certainly knew that there was an opportunity and he took it. Well, I think it's more the fact that Connor is, was so intent on making that hit, regardless of the, of the, of the outcome. And if that's the mindset that Munster have, Leinster have to be willing and have to be ready for the opportunity when it presents them. Yes, it felt like the ball was in play for an age there. There was a little bit of collateral damage. There was a bit of treatment for Keith Earl, so too Sean Cronin. Just make sure he gets the ground before. Peter Romani, as you saw. Leave the lifters. Yeah. Ball turnover back and forth between both sets Six. of players. Six man. Uh, just get your timing right. Yeah. Okay. I think it's probably worth noting as well on. that when Leinster managed to get the uh, the break up the up the final. Oh, they've they got short the here with Cronin back inside to Van der Fleer. Bundled into touch, touch right touch by that corner goal. flag. Well, that was clever between Another open side and Hooker. Up. Thrown it alive to the threat that maybe Munster just had switched off for a fraction of a second. Goes, it's going to be a 22. No, 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 no. Of course, uh, when you, we oh. mentioned Time's this off. game just doesn't stop. But we mentioned uh, earlier in commentary the importance of Tyke Byrne and yeah, Peter Manning sealing in the air. Touching of course they are. So that's the strategy Time Leinster have come off. up and said, listen, you can battle us in the air, but here's a little option we have available to us. You saw the dexterity of the decision and okay, also the execution, a great opportunity from Cronin and his open Super side. And James Ryan did really well in that exchange. He was so alive to what Cronin was thinking. Jack, get in with me. The 16 get minutes it. have flown by here. We've barely had time to catch our breath, mostly because we've seen players like Larmer seen plenty of ball. That'll be frustrating for the Leinster, Leinster pack there. Done an awful lot of good work in around the front. We've just seen Larmer here. You can see what he's trying to do. The idea is is okay. He's trying to pick a hole. He's gone. Munster have yeah. got a good okay, defensive go. line, and his opportunities ha the opportunity Must hasn't opened, way. and he's tried to right force left. it. And this is something we've been probably very positive about Jordan Larmer his whole season that he hasn't tried to force it. So, you know, that's just that's an that's an unusual uh, pass for him. I think. Not to mention with the wind behind him, he has the opportunity of just saying, OK, you're under pressure, we put the ball back in your 22 and, and see what you do to get out of there. So that option is always there for him. Crouch! Five! Set! Hold! And elbow up! Keep it square, stay close. Use it! Controlled by Bolter. And this time it's Scannell going into that first receiver channel. Oh, he's fine. Ball back with Conor Murray here. Taken on by Tag Burn. Got a try in the game back in October at the Aviva. Carberry. Asking the question of the Leinster fullback. Larmer is equal to the task, and that's a pretty good return okay. kick. And it's actually just drifted into touch. Right away, he's back. Conor Murray just making the point to the assistant referee on this near side. 
Yeah, it's just where it crosses the line. Yeah, it's just the arc of the ball. Set it into touch some 30, 40 metres downfield. Interesting defence there yeah, off the scrum. The uh, uh, Leinster's scrum half, Luke McGrath, made that tackle. Worry, the scrum half that. has become very, very on. important how, how teams defend I'll, off scrums and where they position. Do they rotate around at the blinds or not? But Luke McGrath was the man who made that tackle in the Munster attack. Hold! Hold! Scan to a five man Munster line out off the fingertips of Tag Byrne and into the arms of CJ Stander. Ryan running straight and hard at Kean Healy. Another seismic collision. Carberry. And for somebody who hasn't played any rugby for a couple of months, he looks pretty sharp. The monster number 10. And looking pretty strong is Chris Farrell. Healy, can he find a way outside of Henshaw? And running straight into James Lowe. Burn. He's out to the side. Carberry. Good service into Klein. So much physicality in those two engine rooms between Toner and Ryan and Klein and Byrne. Scannell. Presentation is good. Service from Murray back inside cleverly to CJ Stander. He stopped straight in his tracks. Farrell. Earls. That's it. Yeah. In the tackle. You're looking at CJ Stander there. And uh, Munster picking up uh, it, up here in the gantry. You can see it. Munster in that particular phase of play. They had seven as in Stander. They had six as in O'Mahony. Klein inside. And I think there was a four, uh, front row four as well. So they're playing a wide game. And as a result, Stander isn't as active as he would be as a number eight, where he would be more used to him getting on the ball much right, more regularly. We'll side, now yeah. there's parts of the yeah, game that are kind of missing him because he's he's sticking with the team tactics. Yeah, yeah as well. I think it was a good defensive okay. set there from uh, yeah, fr from Leinster. Right. They stuck to the task. They uh, okay. numbered up. They yeah. are probably space. getting to grips with Munster's attack, which has been very you know very efficient yeah, for the done. first uh, for the first 20 minutes. But it looks like uh, Leinster are starting to you know get their numbers right at the break, not committing in. Seeing where their ball carriers are coming in, seeing a good tackle from um, Van der Fleer on, uh, on on CJ coming around coming around the corner, and they're starting to make those uh, those one on one hits. Um, and Munster struggling maybe to get the uh, the mismatches that they're clearly looking for because you're seeing the break up between Crouch. Earls, you're seeing Carberry getting on the ball. They're looking to find mismatches, and for the moment, Leinster are uh, defending it reasonably well. Very evenly and interestingly poised. Twenty one and a half minutes in. Carberry, Scannell, a good step. Got him beyond ring rows. The second line of cover is always there from Henshaw. And having uh, missed the tackle, it's the second to go. Gary Ringrose is up to make a big hit on Joey Carberry. And that's not a popular decision from Mike Adamson. And there's the, uh, the great, when you see centre partnerships working well together. You can see uh, Gary Ringrose getting up there to make that hit, but just previously he's gone up to make the uh, put the pressure on. Uh, you can see again just closing in on, on Carberry, but he's gone up out of the line. Scannell stepped him and gone back under, and uh, Henshaw Henshaw tidies him up. I'd say Gary was just skirting the offside line, line there, but listen, if he uh, as long as as long as the guys in the in, in the middle are happy with it, and he times his run down to perfection, and uh, I'm sure there was no love loss in that little uh, collision either. First time back at the RDS, of course, in uh, most of the colours for Joey Carberry. He was on the receiving end of a few uh, tasty challenges in the match at the Aviva back in October. And central to some of the incidents, shall we call them, in the first half of that feisty game at Dublin Park back in December. And what can they manufacture here? They go wide a little bit earlier on this occasion to Healy. Fire Farrell. And he's done well, Healy. And here they come again with Tyke Byrne. Tackled by Ruddock. Scandal again. And he's shown well in the opening 23 minutes here. Murray again. Oh, lovely flat pass to Byrne. Byrne gets it away to Ryan. Ryan to CJ Stander. And almost intercepted by James Lowe. He's knocked that forward. Lancer trying to get their defence sorted out here. 
certainly appeared to go forward off James Lowe's hand. Is it a deliberate knock-on? Is it just a knock-on advantage? I think we're going to have to have a look. It's a penalty. So this is the break from Tyke Byrne. For one moment in time, I felt that the blue jerseys, they, they're not engaging the breakdown, they're spreading out, there's 13 in, in a flat line, and they just got themselves muddled enough, but a player of Tyke Byrne, again, a little like Ringrose earlier on, Tyke Byrne spots the opportunity and goes straight through the hole. A lovely play, skipping three blue jerseys. I think you've got to give uh, Conor Murray a huge, uh, a huge wrap in the back there. As he's running to that ball, his shoulders are faced to the other direction. Well, further consultation... That's a yellow card for James Lowe. Post called. Mike Adamson has decided there's enough in that and potentially enough numbers out wide for Munster. They do have a two-man overlap. And it's ten minutes in the bin for James Lowe, the it's man who was red of, in the last game. It's interpretation of was it a genuine effort to get the ball or not. And that's a, it's a fine line, isn't it? I think the context around it probably uh, probably shadows it and that it, it doesn't look good if he was maybe trying to flick it up, do something with it. Um, but again, just saying with Conor Murray, as he's, uh, as he's shaping to go one direction and then pops back the other way and gives out three people for, Con for Tyburn. Lovely pass. Almost identical position from where he kicked the first penalty and he's absolutely spot on with the second. He's kicked very well from the tee this season. He's up at around 87%, which is a big improvement year on year for Joey Carberry on Munster lead. Remember, tactically, if, if the scoreboard stays like this for the remainder of the half, Munster can adjust their tactics entirely in the second half with the wind behind him if the wind stays as it is. Listen, James Lowe obviously made a decision and he, and he goes in to try and uh, to run the back the ball got Ross Byrne just kicking off here there was a serious there was four there was a four man overlap for Munster there so it's a, it's an interesting question for somebody like we probably ask him to act does he leave it does he stay does he tackle him or does he try and defend and not give up which do you prefer to have do you prefer to have your 15 players on the field and give up potentially seven points well certainly if one of them is him you want yep. him on the pitch very truly. The monster, of course, it goes without saying. We'll try and turn the screw here with the man advantage. Jack! How many? Six. Six man. Leinster in. Okay. Off the top from Reese Ruddock this time. Picked up by Luke McGrath. Conan. McGrath, and it goes to Devon Toner. Dave Kilcoyne makes a good challenge on his Ireland teammate. Lancer on the Munster 10 metre line. Well, it was intended for Gary Ringrose, it's been knocked on, and can Munster fashion something from the turnover here with Tig Byrne? The ball's gone loose as he looked to place it. Robbie Henshaw was in there. It's Back we go for the knock-on. Um, having run that move uh, numerous times in the in the centre, um, you're looking to get the ball to the 12 and have that option of hitting the 13 short or giving the 10 on the wraparound. Generally, a move like that is off of a go-forward ball. Again. Just Josh yeah, Vanderfeer enters the line out and Reese Rourke just isn't so stable when he gets the ball. Right. They've won. That'll go statistically that's as a line out win. But that's not what Luke McGrath wants. He absolutely should throw that ball back and say that's not good enough for a side of this quality. And that leads then, doesn't it, Gordon, to the knock on effect of a rushed defence and that leads to inaccuracies? Yeah, and going through with the move as opposed to going, you know, we're actually getting knocked back here. This is slow to, uh, you know, slow to very slow ball. We need to try and either get, get momentum or look for where the space is but there definitely wasn't space where they're giving it there looking for Henshaw or Ringrose to try and win collisions on the back foot is a big ass something to consider potentially with uh, would that happen if Johnny Sexton's on the pitch with all his experience 10 years more experience let's say than Ross Byrne to see things on the fly like that yeah I think you've got to you've got to put a little bit on the guys that are outside who are lining up for that they've got to be feeding that information into Ross just looking at the way the Leinster have reshuffled because of James Lowe Josh Van Der Fleer is on the right wing now facing Keith Earls I assume Keith Earls has communicated that back in I'm looking both on the pitch here and the monitor as well but that's that's a position where he may not have spent a whole lot of time 
preparing for. Five. That's an opportunity for Leinster in some way, or for Munster, Five. that is, to, to expose Six. that potential. As well, and you've got uh, Scan's left foot here um, lining up, so you know, this, is the, this is the which way do they go? Is it the bluff or the double bluff? Well, first and foremost, it's a very good scrummage, and it leads to a penalty. CJ Stander enjoyed that. No. Well, the no. penalties are piling up now on an Insta point of view. The scrum came up under pressure. Okay, it's up under pressure. The cohesion matched by the par of oh, the 1 to 8 in Munster Red. No, really up. good stuff from the forwards. One of those energizers, isn't that what you call them, Liam? Absolutely. But it's all working out supremely well for Munster. There's a lot of variety, much more variety in their game than we've seen the last number of weeks. But things are beginning to take hold. And Leinster's ill-disciplined in terms of the penalty, but also just the functionality of what they're trying to achieve yeah, is slightly ill-disciplined. Yeah, I think so as well. And, just, and the way Munster are managing the game, the momentum in it, I think Joey has been really, really smart in how the resources that he's asking his forwards to do. And he's sharing the load between the, the pack and the, uh, and the outside backs. It's a little bit loose, good spoiling work done by James Ryan, and it leads to a line-out turnover for Leinster, picked up by Kean Healy. Devon Toner showing good feet, nice little step. Ryan again. Ruddock. Ten minutes to half time. The 15 of Munster against the 14 of Leinster. Three-point game for the visitors in the semi-final. Ross Byrne under a lot of pressure, had to get that kick away quickly because of the attentions of CJ Stander. That's good take from Healy. Really good work from the Munster fullback, and they're queuing up here again. Ty Burney's had a really good half hour. And it's another good carry from a player who's having a fascinating season. Kilcoyne, his number seeming to improve all the time. Very good Six Nations. Oh, no. Here he is again, always available. And there's Jack Conan. This is great stuff from both teams. Oh, Tremendous like... appetite for the physical. And release! And no little skill set, even though the game's been played at a frantic pace so far. Carberry, who's often the catalyst. Scannell. Oh, and here they come with Stander. It's good physicality from Henshaw. And Healy too is there for Conor Murray. Healy. I thought about the pass to Scannell, who'd kind of put back in against the green. And there they go to Klein now. Tackle from Van der Fleer. It'll be hard to shift from there. Penalty turnover. And that's what Josh Van der Fleer brings to the party. Well, that's a, a fantastic turnover and exactly what you want from uh, that man, Josh Van der Fleer. And it just shows maybe the balance in the in the in the Leinster back row maybe a little bit better we've seen trying, uh, carrying the ball in here Josh getting his hands yeah, out and doing exactly the textbook seven there but just looking at the Leinster defensive line there and the Munster attackers their first receiver their ball carrier just seems to have a little bit more time on the ball when you compare to the Munster line speed that the Leinster players are having to kick when they don't want to maybe passing when they don't want to just seems like Leinster are not getting their defensive line up as, as much now they get the turnover but I feel they could definitely be looking at that lane Absolutely, and I think the two, if you saw the, on the manager so there, the replay of that line out, I think oh, both sorry, yes. Munster and but Leinster's line out are consumed by the opposition's ability to challenge them, and it's almost paralysing them in a way. Okay. Like that was a total misfunction. I think it was Tyke Byrne was in mid, and Klein was in front of him. Klein stepped out, he, Byrne came forward, and no front lifter. So he didn't get into the air at all, and we've seen Leinster's line out struggle as well. I think yes, keep it simple, get the ball in yeah, quickly, and get it away quickly would be one possible option. But that one when Klein carried into the breakdown, he had a red jersey near him. So Rory O'Loughlin in while uh, Robbie Henshaw Keep gets assessed for a HIA. I got it. I was in the line. Leinster back on the offensive. You know that. Here. Open. 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 Seven wins in the last nine games against Munster. Hold. For Leinster, Fair. and a good take from Much Kevin better. Quick in, quick out. 
And quickly back to Sean Cronin, the man who scored 39 That's tries in Leicester ball. Colours. Extremely prolific. You can see it there in the manner. The hindmost foot is almost abandoned this season, but that's a very obvious one. Penalty advantage for the offside. Can Leinster take full advantage? And we'll go back for offside, the... Offside, number seven. Offside. I think he said offside number seven, but he could have said seven of you offside. Might have been more accurate. Close called. It's a lovely little bit of gamesmanship there from Luke McGrath. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Anyway, yeah, back there, uh, you can see that you know the the intent is there from Munster, and you got to you've got to uh, you've got to um, pat them on the back for that. But it has to be the accurate, particularly in here where you're um, where penalties like this can can matter. And you can see, you know, Leinster with a couple of minutes left on the uh, on, on the sim binning. If they get to yeah, get three points and go back to six, on, six, yeah. it's really important. This is a big kick for 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 Ross Byrne. But again, from a line-out management, I don't know who's actually managing the Leinster line-out. Uh, is it Toner or is it James? It was formerly Toner, but I think that position maybe that That's mantle may be in the process of being handed over. But that was a, an excellent, excellent line-out. Get the ball in quick, get it to the highest, tallest target you can, get it down, set up them all, and then you're looking for those scores. In this case, Leinster, with the, with the man in the bin, are conscious they're burning the clock and potentially getting three points at the same time. Long no, following this kick, we'll be back to the full complement and parody resort of 15 aside. So, about 20 seconds. Okay. An important moment this for then, yeah. Ross Byrne. He's kicked all his pressure kicks this season. You think back to the European quarter final against Ulster at the Aviva, he was exceptional. Seem to strike that very cleanly and lots of conviction That's behind it. And so far, yeah. 34 and a half minutes in, it's, it's the tail of the two tens at the RDS in the semi final. Six points apiece, two penalties for Byrne, two penalties for Carberry. And James Lowe is back in. Thought it would be tight, and so it's turning out to be. Just a single point between them here 12 months ago, remember, in the semi final. Stay. Very different game to one we saw at Scotsman between Glasgow and Ulster last night in the first semi final. Glasgow are leading the winners of today's clash, don't forget. At Celtic Park in Glasgow next Saturday. Use it. Leave them now. Glasgow have beaten both these sides in the Pro 14 this season. Mike Haley underneath this one. Mike Haley got away from Rory O'Loughlin. There for Connor Murray. Kilcoyne wants it, Carberry gets it. Farrell has it. And in comes Scannell. Just as Leinster were looking to turn that over from Van der Fleer again. Principal protagonist in there. That's a couple against his name, and that's a high challenge. And away goes McGrath. The answer Croyd not happy with that. Mike Adamson Stop is uh, Mike. Stop He's got a lot to deal with here. He's getting some assistance from his AR on the far side into his earpiece. Wait till you played on. Wait till you played on at the kick. So uh, Chris Farrell is having a big impact in the opening 40 minutes but this is a superb breed from both Byrne and Josh uh, van der Fleer. there was a massive gap between yeah, the Leinster open side and Farrell again a little a little clever play from uh, which resulted in his penalty in this up run but a great bit of defensive play from Time both off. Byrne but especially Josh van der Fleer. some attention meantime for Joey Carberry in the centre of the pitch yeah. High tackle on nine after the tap and go as well. The oh, I didn't see that. There's yeah. a high tackle, I'm sure there was somewhere in among all of that. He, he took the tap, and there's a guy running next to him, but he didn't try and tackle him. Okay. But your nine just kind of ran into him, handed him off, so it's a play on there. Carberry seems to be okay, which is good news for Munster. Just reflecting okay. on last night's game, 50 points, or 70 points in total, or whatever it okay. was. Okay? This is 12 points, but this yeah. is such a vastly better game to watch. So much going on. 
so many yeah. little battles. Oh. Okay, time back on, Paddy. In the middle? In the middle. Thank you. Turn with the target. Another good take from Toner. There's a Leinster penalty. It's absolutely on a knife edge, and every little Number facet and nuance line. of the game is so delicately poised. But it's it's their go-to play. Leinster yeah, consistently, when they're about 30 exactly. yards out from their own line, will play the clock, will be conscious of the scoreboard, yeah, will be conscious of the field position, and they do this constantly. They get the ball, they get a line out, they source it well, and they just eke out a relatively cheap three points. But two and a half, lads. Two and a half. Two and a half minutes to half time. You can hear Mike Adamson telling the players. There you go. Yeah. Can they be separated going into the sheds at half time? And it's Leinster in the ascendancy in terms of field position, but only just. Can they manufacture something from the line out a long way out from that Munster line? Stay. Four Thank penalties you. to show for their efforts so far. Time to go for Conan, who showed good dexterity and balance, but it's monster ball, and it's with Stander. Ross Byrne did well to wrestle him to the floor. Murray. Carberry to Scannell. Back inside Rory O'Loughlin, but he meets Sean Cronin. It's there for Conor Murray to tag Byrne now. Oh, it's ripped here by Reese Ruddock, and then a little bit of footwork, almost back heel like from Keane Healy, and picked up by James Ryan. The hands off! Hands away is the call from Mike Adamson. Ty Byrne was sniffing out a, a jackal turnover. He's had a, quite a few of those these se this season. Byrne to Ringrose. Hold. The referee was well placed to a judge whether or not there was an arm a little bit high there from Connor Murray. Not so. On goal answer over halfway. Stay. There from McGrath. Ryan. Again, his carry ratio is huge. Toner just had to juggle with it for a fraction of a second, and then it's gone loose. And Ty Burns seizes on it. Connor Murray did that go forward from Scannell. Time off, got an injury here. Medic staff, please. That was big Tevin Toner Mike, taking there was a pirouette of various passes and yeah. passes, yeah. and he eventually got the yeah. ball yeah, almost one. standing. It was double hit, went down awkwardly. Another high tackle on HIA reversal. Robbie Henshaw is coming back in for Rory O'Loughlin. There's not. That's not. The type of, uh, type of athlete and player that Devon Toner is. He doesn't stay down. And not many things do. And you could see a look of worry in, uh, even from the uh, referee's face there as he stopped play straight away and looking for guys to get on. And this is a worry for Devon. And this is where he uh, picked it up. Yeah, Kilcoyne got a great hit in him. And he catches his left foot there, doesn't he? But he wasn't really uh, expecting the ball. I know I we all I should know. expect Paddy, the ball, but he way. certainly shouldn't. Wasn't expecting it. That's. I'll just check it. That's the yeah. getting the let your leg caught yeah. underneath you, not and the stud stuck yeah. in the ground. So 42 and then seconds. Another seconds. player's weight going down on on top of you. 42. Yeah, it's never good, and it uh, doesn't help when it's the 115 kilograms plus of Dave Kilcoyne. To, to Munster. Collective wins are on the RDS as they looked at that on the uh, the big screens. Yeah, you're In terms of his value, though, when that line-out was struggling, he hit two targets, and each time he's hit, it works perfectly. When they bury that line-out entry, it isn't working as crisply as they'd like. That's a blow. Thankfully, they have a... Uh, getting a... Devon clapped off here. You can see how, how well he resonates with this, uh, with, the, with the support base around uh, around Dublin and around Leinster. Um, but this just shows the quality of the Leinster squad that you can bring in Scott Barry, who's been absolutely seminal to all the good things that Leinster has done this year. And given how the game has actually gone for Leinster, you know, I, I know they're probably losing, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, one of their main weapons in, in the lineup. But you're bringing now Scott Vardy in. Who's going to help balance up that uh, maybe that physical contact around the around the breakdown? <laughs> Started the game last week in Newcastle. And so concern for Devon Toner. We wish him a, a speedy recovery. Okay, let's let's hope it's not too serious. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, 
The confirmation of that uh, reversal of the HIA. Well, we're almost at half time and it's uh, six points apiece. Cracking contest. Crutch! Bye! Set and hold! Hotel waits and they're seeking out another penalty here. Monster is uh, been swings and roundabouts at scrum time. Both front rows up. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. They came up. Yeah, you can hear what Keane Healy is saying. Listen, he's learned he has to adapt to the referee's interpretation of the evolving scrum. He knows that if he goes around and loses his shape, he'll concede a penalty. So he's trying desperately to communicate to the referee. No, 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 no this isn't me. They're actually circling around on the other side. Last play, lads. Good play, good communication from Healy, a lot of experience to control that matter. Let's go, boys. Let's go, lads. I think in a lot of these things, Liam, it's like showing the referee the pictures, and you can see this exactly what he was doing. He was showing where his hips were, showing the referee going, and very, very conscious not to be giving away a penalty at this point, particularly with Conor Murray's ability to hit the long range kicks. Crouch! Five! He a one from halfway at the Rico Arena in that game against Saracens in the Heineken Cup. Murray encouraged to play it, and he did. And Carberry gets it away to Farrell. And Farrell made it inside Ross Byrne. And here they come with Ty Byrne. Tackle from Ruddock. Picked up by Kilcoyne, and off he goes. No little ballast about the loose head prop forward, Dave Kilcoyne. In fairness, Luke McGrath, he made that tackle on Scandal. They're seeking out those kind of mismatches all across the park. As Jack Conan was on Joey Carberry there. Scannell, Niall Scannell. Back to it. Murray, missing out Healy. Dropped out of the way of it, let it go through to his captain, O'Mahony. Clock has long since been in the red, so this will be the final passage of play, you feel. That's Barney over it. Carberry, can't quite get Healy into any space, Ruddock made sure of that, Lancaster penalty here, Keane Healy over it, no let up in the effort from either side, defences have been excellent throughout. Darce, it seems that Joey Carberry, with all his intent, is it that he doesn't have the options available to him, that he's been hit, that the, just the lines of the depth of himself, but more importantly his, off, his, his options Ross, aren't coming in at the, why is he being caught in possession? I think it's a, it's a combination of a couple of things. There's some good um, defensive sets from Leinster, good collisions, not having to put too many resources into it. So they're able to number up. When Leinster are numbering up and you have that confidence from the outside and you, you can see Jack Conan, he's got his hand up in the air saying, I have Carberry, I have Carberry. You talk about just doing your own job. He can come up and he has good trust, good faith in the players outside him that they're going to look after the players uh, that they're defending. So he can just focus in on Carberry. And then Carberry is just, when he when he gets the ball, he looks up and he's just seeing blue coming in, coming in. As soon as he stalls, Conan has but it. But that, that's why he's not getting the options Nothing available to him. So he's going to have to adjust. He either gets them in or he has to take up a different position and revert to a different style. Yeah, I think that's that's the the onus. The onus is on him to uh, to try and try and unpick this uh, Leinster defence. But he was static as well, which meant he wasn't an option as, a, as an attacker. And that line out duel is incredibly close as well. We saw again scrappy ball off the top from Reese Ruddock because there was two or three pods of monster players in the air making it difficult for him. And they have secured possession. Back it goes from Larmer. McGrath and Byrne getting the moving. No way through for Dave Carney. In the side, in the side. Oh. The referee's getting tuition all the time, as you can hear, probably on his mic. Byrne goes deeper to Ringrose. Options here potentially for Larmer. Comes back inside and he's gone past three or four. Typically brilliant, elusive running from Jordan Larmer. Slow coming back as Connor Murray's trapped in there. Doesn't matter, penalty Lanster. Are they to finish the half with a score that puts him in front? 
kickable range. We've got two balls on the pitch at the moment. One has been dispatched by Mike Haley as James Ryan carries it on for Leinster. Ross Byrne all the way back to low. Has a little look at Farrell. And he gets his pass away to Larmer. No advantage coming for Leinster and we will have a penalty, a kickable penalty potentially to separate the sides at half-time. Yeah, it's a roll. Isn't it amazing to watch Leinster slip back into that mode of championship team yeah. where they Post understand goal. they get a penalty inside in around their 22 and they kick to touch and they just keep building, hunting for this opportunity and ultimately getting this three points is going to separate the side. Quality play from but Leinster. Play the tackle held on well to as, uh, you can see ended up on the wrong side. As Larmour just skirts back inside, you can see the eagerness from the Munster defenders to try and, but their shoulders are all pointed downfield. They're all so desperate to make defence that they dropped their defensive shape and then Larimore you can see uh, ring rows as well they're just trying to pick and look and hunt for those little gaps and Munster have given them two in this game and Leinster have taken both of them yeah, he's looked very sharp Jordan Larimore he hasn't scored a try since that game out against Bath at the wreck in December that intercept try which was so important in the pool stages of the Heineken Cup for Leinster now then an opportunity for Ross Byrne. <laughs> and again, he's 100% spot on off the kicking tee, Ross Byrne. Yeah. And the man who has stepped into this semi-final in the absence of the World Player of the Year who's on the bench and in reserve yeah, has I'm done going. really well. And it's his third penalty of the yeah. afternoon that separates Leinster and Munster yeah, at half-time in the Guinness Pro 14 semi-final. Three penalties for Ross Byrne, two for Joey Carberry. It's anyone's match as we await the second 40 minutes. Good half at the RDS. Leinster lead Munster, nine points to six. Well, it is very much on a knife edge as we turn around after a fascinating 44-45 minutes. And that late penalty just before half-time from Ross Byrne gives Leinster a slender three-point advantage. Remember, cast your mind back to here 12 months ago and it was just a single-point win for some, Leinster. Some Munster well, got stronger as the game went on that afternoon and almost got themselves into a winning position. Leinster were hanging on at the end and anything could transpire over the course of the next 40 minutes. Certainly, Johan van Graan will feel that his side, with Joey Carberry marshalling them, can do a job on Leinster in this second half. OK, time on. It was an attritional 40 minutes. Both defences were excellent. And it came down to the two tens. Three penalties for Byrne, two for Carberry, who will be going to Celtic Park in Glasgow next Saturday evening at five o'clock to take on the Glasgow Use Warriors. It. Up it goes from Luke McGrath. Leinster now in this second half, remember, playing with the aid of the breeze at their backs. Flat from Murray to Byrne. That's a beautiful offload from Tyke Byrne. Farrell. Testing Henshaw, and here's Carberry. Feet always on the move, always looking for that half a gap, and he runs into his opposite number, Ross Byrne. Murray again now to Scannell. Scott Bardy in for Devon Toner, in case you're just joining us for this second half. John Ryan. Standard. You can see the blue line there in defence. They're totally not contesting the breakdown. They've two in the backfield. It's going to be really difficult to break down this blue wall. Klein. No, it's ripped Back clear in. by Van der Fleer. Two knock-ons. Two knock-ons. He's been excellent, Van der Fleer, for a player who's played play absolutely no rugby for such a long time. Yeah. And he's come back again ahead of schedule yeah. from that growing up operation. They're wondering who hasn't played advantage. Yeah. It's hard to think he'll make it through the whole 80, so there will be time for Max Deegan to come on. But it's, he's been very impressive in the opening 40. And that, that discipline around the, the defensive line 
uh, will Munster react to it and start maybe to look to put the ball behind it and, and to test it and just slow down the on-rushing defence? I think it is an area of the field to kind of have the right monster, have the right uh, idea as to attack. You can see, well, you just don't want to see is Joey Carberry carrying the ball like he is doing in the wide channels because they just, you need him as that first Take receiver. If they're going to play off 10, they need Joey Carberry not at the bottom of Go. rooks. They need him directing and pulling the strings because, as we were saying in the, in the first, when they stand off him, Joey carries the ball, he gives that optionality, he can carry, gets people on the front foot. If you can get both, you can get Klein. They're big ball carriers carrying a pace off Carberry. That's where Len that's where they'll stretch Leinster. I do believe this is Leinster's first scrum of the match, 42 minutes in. Yep. Which is a huge testament to the quality of the handling skills of the Munster team. Suddenly got it's a built in balance. Considerably grayer overhead and darker at the RDS. And there's a few squally, thundery showers Set. forecast for the second half of this game. Anywhere around four o'clock, it's said. Uh, that'll add an interesting aspect to it if it becomes a slippery, greasy ball. <laughs> Difficult ball for Luke McGrath, but it's a Leinster penalty. I think uh, Peter Manny did exceptionally well to break <laughs> very quickly to get Luke McGrath. I think that might be where the penalty came from. Blue going forward, red stripping yeah. left. And if he'd held his nerve for <laughs> a foot, one more foot, uh, one foot later, he probably would have been picking up, um, picking up Luke, Luke McGrath, a la Stephen Ferris, yeah, and forward, pushing yeah. him down the uh, the Leinster end of the field, but into the car park maybe. Perhaps Liam. Yeah. Again, we mentioned set piece, and the guys at half time were mentioning set piece. This is a wonderful attacking platform for Leinster. They've put their back row into the midfield, so it's hugely important they get the source. Double count in terms of the penalties. Eight against four. That was very, very tight again. Shooter out of the line, almost getting the intercept. Here goes Cronin. On his way here, Cronin. Up to the 22, good tackle from Mike Healy, had to be. And then it's against the recruiting Niall Scannell. Yellow card straight away from Mike Adamson. Drama inside the opening four minutes of the restart. Offside running between that channel. There's a little bit of uh, cynicism there from Luke McGrath, but if it's there, why not, why not take it? Um, Got to say, a little bit confused by uh, what CJ was trying to do off the back of that when we're... Uh, off that defensive set on the line out to be getting that high up and we're seeing um, the retreating scannel and uh, Luke McGrath just enjoying that we see uh, we see this just that pulling him out letting uh, letting Cronin go through um, on that but uh, yeah just a really kind of strange defensive set from Munster there but it does say once once Lencer got that or indeed Munster for that matter once you get the source of the ball as clean and as predictable as that it allows maybe in the third phase of that first phase for that ploy to go so it was a set up and then it was a rewind bringing Cronin in behind the neutral position in behind the breakdown there's no better player in world rugby than Cronin taking that ball on but the source of the ball from the line out had to be that accurate to allow that to come happen absolutely Jim. but then why was CJ Sander going for an intercept in his own, you know, five metres outside of his own 22 to give that easy go forward ball. Yeah, if he gets it, he goes the length of the field. But that's high, that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting choice. And it's four out of four for Ross Byrne. And the 15 of Leinster lead the 14 of Munster now by 12 points to six. Double scores, five minutes into the second half. So they're heading towards double figures, Monster. They'll need to try and curtail that penalty count. And certainly that'll be something they'll have spoken about, I'm sure, at length this week. It could come down to penalties and conceding penalties in dangerous areas of the pitch. And they're heading towards double figures. And with Niall Scannell in the bin, they'll be under the pump here, you would feel, Munster, for the next eight or nine minutes. Bota, they need to get him involved in the game. Some of those typically robust carries. 
Carberry just looking to turn Leinster around. He's measured that exceptionally well. That's absolutely brilliant from Joey Carberry. Exactly what Munster needed at this point in time. That did, did that get a touch in, in the yeah. kick? I'm not, I'm not entirely the sure. Yeah, Mark's on the post. Let's get the gap. Quite many. We did talk about that. We did talk about the when do you start changing the game? When do you try and you know bang your head a little bit smarter rather than harder? And it's a great kick. A little bit of luck. I think Luke McGrath thought it was going to hey, run dead. Um, and great to play. And then sloppy penalty from Munster there. James Ryan took it pretty well, but Tyburn was uh, jumping across, so it is a penalty. Well, the fact that he ended up on the far side, I think, was ultimately the, the initial jump and momentum did take him across, but the fact he impacted the uh, James Ryan setting up the ball. But this, I agree with you, Darcy. Having played a clever uh, game management by Carberry, conscious of down a player, um, kicking it into that corner, they should have just said, listen, now, Lancer, you figure your way out of here, but to give them that cheap option is... How many? Five. And Sean O'Brien, bottom left of your picture, just carrying a little bit of a knock in middle, into... Please this week okay. so not risked which means of course he's played his last game in Leinster Colours at the RDS Munster ball here in prime position and they've got it into the South African Bolcha taken on by Kilcoyne driven back by Van der Fleer Vardy's over it but Leinster secure it taken on by Stander great carry into the 22 and pick up from John Klein as well tackle tackle by Ryan and Bolcha that's three big carries from Marlo Boto in the last couple of minutes. There's really good tempo about this from Munster. Much better from the visitors. Ty Burnley's been good. That's going to be a penalty against Scott Fardy. Murray goes wide. Scannell. And he's wrapped up by a couple of tacklers with the advantage. Munster here inside the Leinster 22. Murray again. Carberry on the little wrap around. Carberry comes back. Conway. Good tackle from McGrath, no advantage. advantage. Penalty coming. Yeah, Scott Farley had a had a sniff at the ball, went for it, and then lost his feet. Probably deserves a little a little word from the referee as well yeah, as the penalty. Then came off it. Yeah, I yeah. agree with you, agree to there, Liam. I think, but a player of his experience, you'd expect him once he's lost that, that he would just kind of roll away and get into it. Um, it has just shown that you know top quality players. Um, you can see a Tig, Tig has gone in. He's gotten into the ball position, and you can see Fardy's come in. He's done everything right here, but once he's lost that, I suppose it's the pictures that he's looking at. The referee is, you know, where it is in the where it is in the in the uh, in the in the pitch was always going to be a penalty. the simplest of tasks for Joey Carberry to bring Munster back to within three points of Leinster 12 points to nine, ten minutes gone in the second half yeah it's that kind of afternoon alright, this one may well go all the way down to the wire the wire being extra time as well so we better prepare for that stranger things have happened for sure, very little in it that was a really good passage of play from Munster Tireless again, as always, from Keith Earls. But I think your, your point is well made as we watch uh, Munster exit. The fact that they carried one man around the edge is the one way of combating this 13-man uh, wide defence. I think Munster, in the right field position, can utilise that as another tactic. Get around the edges, keep power on one quick pick, one clean, quick pick, and keep powering forward. It's a little bit of a miscue from Conor Murray. Ball's going forward off Scott Farley and picked up Same here by Arno Bocha, who's come out all no. guns blazing Same. in the second half for Munster. Deeper they go to Carberry, dinks one through, two or three runners going through there, taken from Luke McGrath. 
And away comes Ruddock. Low. Carberry goes in, tries to rip it clear from the Kiwi. Don't push the ball into this track. McGrath gets it to Ross Byrne, no way through. Henshaw and Ringrose to his left hand side. And here comes Low. McGrath will dig it out and find his tight head prop tied furlong. And Ross Byrne goes deeper to Ringrose. Henshaw. Can he find a little bit of space? Almost up to the 22. Through it goes. Difficult for Healy from the kick from Byrne. Oh, Monster back on their own five metre line. Oh. They need to execute oh, a, an exit strategy Good here. Murray Contest waits. Wants a little bit of protection. They're going to try and run it clear for now at least. There's where they do have the left boot of Scannell. That's a really, really good kick. That's gone into touch over on that far side. That's brilliant from the inside centre. Huge kick. A great exit from uh, from Munster. Just when you think Lencer are starting to uh, turn a bit of a screw on them. Yeah, you, you just get this... Uh, well, you've seen the, the kick through from Ross Byrne and the pressure they're putting in on Mike Haley. And you just think this is where Lencer are going to build the pressure into, uh, into Munster. And as you're saying, Liam, just that one... One extra rook, and it's then Scanlon puts his middle. hand up and just delivers an excellent, excellent kick right from the dead ball line. Just a quick word on the outside defence from Munster. I think it was Keith Earls outside. Between Henshaw and Ringrose, they had an opportunity and they had numbers, but Earls shut down the door and forced Henshaw to come back infield. Good, clever outside defence from Earls. That's good gain of ground from Lancer Cronin. Brings them up well over halfway. Five, or six in the side, I think. Like, it's such a tool Lancaster have to do this. Anytime they want to the eke out a potential score, they go to that lineup ball. Here's Larmer. And low against Healy. Munster fullback did well just to bring him to ground. No way through on that occasion for James Low. Jack Conan. Low inside it goes to Dave Carney. Corny did well. Oh, they've a huge overlap on that right-hand side. Healy straightens Furlong. Wide it goes to Cronin. Back in field. Cronin for the line. And Cronin scores. Did you just say Furlong, Healy, Cronin score? The full front throw involved. What an amazing part of three. All the way through from the line up ball. Every time the little pods of three in blue jerseys, they kept testing weak shoulders of red jerseys. You never want when there's an overlap to have your tight head, loose head, and hooker as the potential option. But these three players are special players, and they are the ability to convert that into a score. And we're going to see the ball getting ending up out here with uh, Jordan Larmer, and they get it to this man, James Lowe, and he has three really, really important uh, passes to play in this uh, in this build up to this try. He's such a mercurial uh, player. They like to get him the ball, and you can just see where Keane Healy did. He had a little little panic. To her to Furlong Cronin off the outside foot. What a fantastic front row try! Um, but again, just want to go back to how important James Lowe was in that. And one is a carry, and he carried again very shortly after his first uh, the, the first phase. But then just a little the little pop up to Dave Kearney, and again a, a Jack Conan moment as well. Timing is run perfectly onto Luke McGrath gets that three or four or five metres over the gain line and Munster just condensed in off that to open up the space out wide and again it comes down to taking advantage of the man in the sin bin all of a sudden Leinster opening up that little bit of daylight between the teams and this to put ten between them that well, looks pretty good from up here and the Leinster supporters away to our left Behind the post, knew from a long way out that that was good from Ross Byrne. It's a subtle thing, but the, the little pods of three in attack. You mentioned three James Lowe and how players are working around off, off him. Then when there's ring rows or hinge rows, they're working around off him. And the obvious uh, pod of three was the front row themselves. That's a subtle difference between what Leinster's attack have now been doing and what against uh, what Munster have been doing. And by the way, the World Player of the Year has just come in for the man who's kicked that conversion. So Ross Byrne, flawless of the kicking tee today. Five out of five, 56 minutes in. And Johnny Saxton is in for the remainder of this game. 
It's outside, carried think, back uh, in. Probably something that goes outside, un kind of unsaid is the, the skill level that's going through on the on the Leinster players at the moment. And big credit going to Stuart Lancaster in the way that they're comfortable on the ball in the Number air. One offside, comfortable Mike. on the ball. And you see that perfectly with a front row try out wide. Against red? Against red. Okay. Knock on. I, I, hate, I hate this. I really hate this, this law Knock because when a player knocks the ball on and if you're in an offside position and play that then you're offside obviously but when it happens and you're a foot away and your reaction time is like a nanosecond you you're, you're almost just take the ball by instinct it's a very it's a very cruel penalty time off but you're still offside so <laughs> I, I, I empathise with you Liam I, I, I do I empathise but you're, if you're offside you're offside <laughs> So Second, four reds, eight red. Passage of play is to put Leinster back four on the attack eight. zone on that far side. Monster. So Jack O'Donoghue is in. Now this is a big reshuffle because this this puts uh, Wicherly is in. Jack O'Donoghue at seven most likely. Oh. Obviously CJ Standard goes into eight, which I think he'd be more comfortable. I think he's a little lost at seven today. Oh. He just isn't, isn't as involved as a player his quality should be. Well, I don't think seven plays to his natural strengths, which is carrying, carrying the ball and going up to looking to, looking to hurt people uh, with ball, uh, either defence or attack. I mean, if you compare that to how van der Fleer played today as a true out-and-out -out open, open side, and th I think that was a pretty, uh, a pretty easy conversation. Great hands from James Ryan. Here's Saxton, Saxton goes through a big hole. He's got support arriving in Carney, and he pops it off the floor to Conan, picked up now by Larmer. And Larmer goes off on one of those mazy runs into that Munster 22. No. Oh. The ball is there at the feet of Conan, played by Furlong instead. Saxton gets it back from Fardy. And in goes low to play scrum half hurdling over a Munster player and footing to do so. Taken on by James Ryan. Leinster just turning Touch up the heat here. Back. We're back to 15 aside, by the way. Keane Healy carries. Stander is bundled out of the way. Little switch from Sexton to Ring Rose again. Tackle! The challenge from Archer. Noise level is ratcheting up all the time around the RDS. Leinster support sensing that their team in the ascendancy here. Sexton we got his pass away to Ring Rose and now it's low. Carney in support. That's a great pickup from Fardy. No hands! Two oh monster God. players over it. Instead it's there for Luke McGrath. Taco! Don't hold him! No, the ball's there. Don't hold him in. Sexton comes back this way to Ruddock. Ripped clear by Tygburn, but it's there for Luke McGrath. Bounce pass, which is always difficult to defend. And Jordan Larmer looking to use his feet to get around Chris Farrell, but Farrell ripped it clear only to the try scorer, Cronin in to Gary Ringrose. Ryan. Sexton too low. Can't quite get away from the clutches of Chris Farrell. No hands! No hands! Rock form. One of those typical multi phase attacks from Leinster. Just patience and purposeful, waiting for the opening to arise. On goes Ryan again. Sexton. And they were looking for Hanshaw. Ball didn't go to hand. Popped off by Omani. Is there a way through for Haley here? Back it goes instead to O'Donoghue. Not forward. Back for the knock-on. Knock oh, OK, there's, there's certain details that go missing in a game of this ferocity. But watch Keane Healy's entry here and van der Fleer. Look at this for quality clear out. That is a match-winning action. If you can continue to repeat that, it makes an enormous difference. There's that yeah, break from a, Johnny a lovely, uh, the lovely break, the show and go. And again, okay. just what Johnny does when he's carrying the ball in two hands, he, he's always got the heads up, he's got the eye, he's got burn, Mike he's so burn on the inside because he's looking one, at Tyke Furlong, he's watching. That's what Johnny Sexton does, carrying that ball in two hands. One, two, he's playing three. heads up rugby, what's in front of him. 
And again, you can just see Gary Ringrose playing into the, 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 the Henshaw play in, in there as well. But there seems to be a little bit of energy about Leinster now when, uh, with, since the introduction of Sexton. And the uh, try scoring triumvirate, shall we call them, Keane Healy, Sean Cronin, and Jack Furlong have been replaced by uh, Messrs. Brian and Ed Byrne and Andrew Porter. So but from, from, from an underage point of view, for, for kids who play in the game, what Josh Van Der did is of such importance. But what that front row did, simply converting an opportunity, okay, passing to the guy beside on. you, making the proper pass and executing it, it's, those two skills are so important as you transition up through the systems. Absolutely. The, you know, the, the game rewards size at the moment um, because you can run, you can win collisions. But when you see the least path, is path of resistance is being just a simpler skill, catch and pass. And when you see guys like that who are traditionally not uh, the most referred to as the most skilled players um, executing those skills brilliantly, it's absolutely wonderful to see. The rain is imminent, it feels like around the RDS, which has just got a... Get feet closer. cooler as well. Let's go, Immensely difficult place to come and win a semi-final. That's why Leinster have only lost one down the years. And that was the Scarlets a couple of seasons ago, who then turned up a week or so later down the road of the Aviva and beat Munster in the final. Bind! Bind. Set! Hold! Still half an hour, plenty of time for this monster side to get right back into this. Only 10 points, the margin, nothing at this level, in this intensity. Here's Ring Rose, oh, it's been blocked down, and then it just couldn't, wouldn't go to hand rather for Scannell. Yeah, it's kind of looking at it, looking at Munster getting into it. You can see Ringrose, he's got the right idea. He's putting ball to boot. A little bit of luck from Scannell. I think he just, he just needed it. Just to, oh, what do you do? It's one of those ones, is it going to pop into your hands? You're almost waiting for it. Put the boot to ball. You need to put the, they need to put the pressure on from uh, Leinster in there. But I was watching the covering players. There was a couple of speedsters in view, but the covering players were front five players. So if, if that did pop up, he had a great chance to score under the post. Yeah, we're kind of looking at where the where the where the time is. You click it up to 64 minutes into what Munster have to do here. They do need to start building some pressure on Leinster because if Leinster manage to keep this uh, gap, it's going to be very very hard. And then Munster start chasing the game, and we all know what happens when you get into these type of games and you start having to chase the game. So still, it's still an opportunity for Munster, but they just need a bit of pressure now. Five, set. Red, 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 hinging, I think this is again, the, the, yeah. is this the second get scrum for Leinster? Yeah, just get the head and shoulders up, get your feet closer. Need a better height this side. A good deal of change okay. of uh, personnel in those front rows, so... Yeah, I think this is the second scrum, which is a, an enormous doffing of the cap to Munster skill set, particularly as, the, as it's getting damper here now. Crouch! Interesting attack formation there from a... Five! Oh. Set! Hold the push! Ready! No. And it goes from McGrath. That's a good shot from Munster. Leinster under pressure here. That's a massive moment for Munster. Could that be the gateway back into the game? Going forward, then up. Going forward and then up. Huge effort yeah, from no, the pack of forwards. Had the dominance, no. For me, Munster had dominance there. If you look. That's especially pleasant for, um, you're thinking of Kilcoyne, who's an archer who are fighting for Irish honours. A big moment in time for those two boys. Mike, substitution, red nine, red 12. It's on the right uh, ambition from Munster. They need to get a. They need to get a try. They're going into their. I suppose their return from when they get into the 22 hasn't been great for this. Uh, or scoring opportunities hasn't been great. Um, so this is definitely an opportunity. The last time they're here, giving away a penalty. So, say so taking the advice you were giving Leinster in the first first half, uh, Liam Munster need to get this ball in, get it out as quick and as effortlessly as possible. 
Albie Matthewson will be coming in very shortly, but not just yet. Conor Murray still on. The line out from Scannell taken by the Munster captain Peter O'Mahony. Murray waits. Munster finding it difficult to make any progress. Here's Scannell. Tackle, tackle, release. Sexton makes the tackle. Munster get the ball to Brown, and on they come with O'Donoghue. Plenty of energy around that carry, and that's good from Niall Scannell. There for Conor Murray, working the short side with Farrell. He runs into Fardy and Sexton. That's quicker for Murray now to CJ Stander. Better this for Munster. Ball's Lancer there in huge numbers, making it so difficult for Munster to find any traction on their way through. And that's Scott turned Hardy over. Got Scott Fardy got that one. And Scott Fardy's hands on it. No hands, no hands. Oh. Stay there. And that's another big moment in the game and a big moment, big intervention from Scott Fardy. We spoke about all his experience coming on as he did for Devon Toner. Use it! And even the defeat last week in Newcastle, he had a very, very good game, notwithstanding the yellow card. When you think back to the superb scrum penalty that Sub. the coin well Archer and Scannell earned well for their team, red. that's, a, that's a shame that the, the line went well, it was a good setup. But when it went to multiple faces, just you got to protect the ball carrier, you got to beat the shoulders. And in that occasion, Scott Fardy, who's a taller man, won the battle of the shoulders. Not even that, Liam, it's also the one off carry. That's so dangerous throwing in one-off carries that close uh, in a 22 when you've got the defensive line who are down, they're they're ready, they're ready for those collisions. One-off carries a very, very uh, high-risk play. Monster have it. Dan Goggin straight into the thick of things, having come in for Rory Scannell. Matthewson, as I mentioned, in for Connor Murray. And that's good from Archer. Little Hugh Witts. Tackled by Porter, Matthewson, Carberry, Earls, and Goggin. Good challenge by Carney. But, but because of Mun Leinster is spreading the pitch, there aren't Munster aren't getting the numbers out wide. There's an underlap. Matthewson again, Stander. Can't get a huge amount of change out of Jack Conan. Coin, and it's the ferocity of the challenge from Porter that dislodges the ball. Okay. And try as they may up tonight, Munster just can't find a way through this resolute Lancer rear guard. We've seen that the pass from Matheson into, uh, into Kilcoin, and a scrum half standing up to pass to a static player, it's it's unusual to see that from, uh, from at, at, at this level. You, if you're going to be doing this, if you're playing off nine, you want to see Mazin carrying yeah, the ball, um, at least, and getting these guys the closer to the gain line, it, keeping the defenses yeah, honest, um, but passing back yeah. five metres to ask a player to take a run into a, into, into a blue wall um, is a very, very hard way to go about your business. I'm going to come round this side to get back look at it. Are Munster kicking enough, considering that like, Leinster ready? aren't competing at all the breakdown? Yeah. And, and you ready? there's only two in the backfield. There's 13 certainly filling the field. And they're just a couple of times they're getting wide, but there's there's still so many blue jerseys, they're not being able to get outside them. So a little bit more chipping, a little bit more variety in the cross field kicking, etc. I'd say, you know, it's hard because you're in this kind of no man's land, you're kind of 10 metres just okay. outside the 22. And you're kind of judged by the result of the kick. If you get the kick back, it's the best thing. If you don't, you've given away possession and you've kind of lost your ability to build pressure. I think, you know, how their attack is going they do need to look something else somewhere else maybe that is attacking the short side a little bit more or Crunch. picking and going through the middle which hasn't been as uh, a, a, as prominent in this game Bye. set and hold ten point game ten minutes to go and a Leinster penalty the scrum has been very very interesting all afternoon the balance of far is fluctuated back and forth. It is, of course, the last time we'll see 
a lot of these players go toe to toe ahead of the World Cup in Japan. And as Liam and Gordon have been saying all afternoon, it's very interesting. Andrew Porter throw his name into the mix in terms of where he stands in the pecking order in terms of tight heads. It's the Leinster front row who have come out on top on that one. And as a result, they're back up to halfway. Substitution, one red. Off. And as they say that, David Kilcoyne is being withdrawn. Change. So Liam O'Connor is in. Good, get the timing right. As you can see, uh, Leinster just about to throw the, the ball into the, the line. You get a lovely little triangle just picking up off of uh, Johnny Sexton's shoulder. James Lowe on the inside and uh, Robbie Henshaw on, on the outside. Just to try and draw a little bit of the defenders away. And Lowe now walking in onto, uh, onto Luke Marshall's shoulder, hoping to pick up some scraps off, uh, off, off, uh, off around the rook. Ball not coming back, but Leinster do get the penalty. And all the while, the clock now is very quickly becoming the monster enemy. Leinster are very adept at running the clock down and playing the percentages in this kind of position. Ten point advantage, ten minutes to go. Sean Cronin's try so far looks like it's poised to be the difference between the teams, but as we know from so many occasions when these two meet, there's going to be some drama left in the game. Uh, and it's the monster bound Leinster scrum half Nick McCarthy who's replacing Luke McGrath hold, hold. Good time back on Leinster line out Fair contest Don't change, don't change And it's Brian Byrne Keep who up. has it and it's Leinster making progress. Burn breaks away. Matthewson stops him. Porter. Oh. McCarthy waits. Van der Fleer. He's been more than industrious. Really, really impressive for a guy who's come back for his first big Release, game. Right. Putting in 60 plus minutes thus far. Taken on by Fardy. That's gone loose. It's going to be a monster put in. Monster Go need forward. the ball back and they've got it. So again, substitution. Um, I felt one pull that down. It's ten. 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 Trying to, uh, ten. Trying to build a way in and see Scott Fardy actually down yeah. on the ground here. Um, Monster with a, with a scrum from here in the in the in the middle of the field. They've got both sides of the uh, of the field open. JJ coming in. JJ definitely liking to uh, play flat at the line, and that's what they what they need. So they just have to start pushing it now. Monster, there's no room for error. They have they have seven, eight, nine minutes left, and they have to go for a try. It doesn't matter if they're in their own 22. They have to really push the game now to have any hope for uh, salvaging this match. Mike, it's Lloyd. Yeah. Just on space when they're going backwards, just get in and do a bit of work, okay? Yeah, just Good around man. the fringes, is it? Yeah, yeah, just push. Well, he was okay. the match winner, wasn't he, off Time the bench in the quarter final playoff, Strong. JJ Hanrahan, with that monster Strong. kick from almost halfway against Benetton. Okay, lads, the bell team, we must keep it square. Yeah. 70 minutes or thereabouts oh, for Joey Carberry on his return to action. He just couldn't prize open that Leinster defence. Fine. Set. Hold. No stability. Oh. Hey. Let's go, monster. Lads, we need stability. Both sides. Both sides. Stability. No. Well, we've talked a lot this season about. Monsters' desperation for silverware, going all the way back to when they won this title, of course, in 2011. But this Leinster team coming here this afternoon off the back of that defeat to Saracens last week, of course, their season very much in the balance. Fine. Had they not pulled out a big performance today, and thus far they've managed that. And they are in a position to put themselves in the final next week against Glasgow, unless we are set for a huge finish from Munster, that's a great take from Keith Earls. 
could ill afford to cough up cheap possession from a poor pass. 73 minutes on the watch, and Earls made sure he got both hands on it. Matthewson now. Burn. Taken on from Liam O'Connor. Quick recycle from Matthewson. Now JJ Hanron flat to the line, and Conway. That's yeah, good tackle from Ruddock. Matthewson, better. Scannell. It's Johnny Sexton with a very physical challenge there as Munster looked to come straight through the middle. Burn. Mike Healy. Tackle from Henshaw on this occasion. Stander. Little roll of the dice in that Munster back row today from Johan van Graan to put Stander at seven and Bota at eight. O'Connor again and CJ Standers no stay down Listen. meantime in the middle of the pitch gingerly and slowly getting back to his feet Earls Munster desperately need a spark and we know that Earls can provide it and he's got away from Sexton not quite from Conan it was his intercept try in the game in December down at Thoman Park that clinched the game for Munster remember Hanrahan Relentless no pressure hands, from no that Leinster defence. Yeah, there's a penalty the there against Johnny Sexton, the taken hands. quickly by Matheson. They need right. to get to him and around him. Conway. Standard was calling for it. Matheson took responsibility and control of the situation, gets it away to Archer. Did well the scrum half. Porter's no over it. It's a difficult man to shift, but Munster managed it. Now here they come again, this time with Witcherly. That's a little bit loose, but it's gone backwards and it's picked up by Stander. And then Sexton is removed from the situation. Hanrahan finding Liam O'Connor. Five minutes to go, ten point the margin in favour of Leinster. Are the champions on the way to the final to defend their crown or can, Lance, can Munster find something in the dying embers of the game? It's going to take quite something from this position. Something extra special. Solid challenge from Ed Byrne on his opposite number, Liam O'Connor. Healy has it. Goggin gets it wide to O'Mahony. And that's just in behind Stander. He can't quite keep it on the pitch. Substitution, blue seven. You kind of alluded it to it earlier in the, uh, earlier in the half. Seven. That if Munster didn't score, they were going to have to start pushing it. And when you're pushing it against, you don't want to pushing it against a team away from home and chasing by two scores. Um, and that little passage there, you could see it. Leinster almost setting the trap, leaving one man open on the on the uh, on the edge for Munster to try and get the ball there, and then they just squeeze the edges of it. Well, great ovation for Josh van der Flair. Excellent game. Might be an opportune time, Liam. I, I feel to do man of the match. Well, it's uh, what's looking Mike like a massive victory for two. Leinster, where the two conference two. leaders certainly going to meet in the final. That's what it looks like at the moment. Uh, there was many, many performers today, but it was a very special yes. one for the Leinster Open side. His first game back in many, many weeks, and it was a quality performance to play almost 80 minutes, and he is our Guinness Man of the Match. Josh van der Feer. Popular decision around the RDS. Just only on the body, no hands. Blue release, yeah, red. It's great release to see it. him back. Release it, red. No. He's showing his uh, importance, and as he always does. He's had so many setbacks through injury in the last couple of seasons Use or so. It. Use it now. All down to Leinster now, just to see out the last three or four minutes or so. Conway. Munster really when you think back over the 77 minutes they've had precious few good opportunities to try and get in for five or seven points Stay. Leave it. Kevin O'Brien is in by the way James Lowe 
Leinster have the ball back. And surely now you feel that's the game up for Munster. Carried on by James Ryan. Conan's over it. Conan's had a great game. Leinster marching on to that final in Glasgow at Celtic Park next week against Glasgow. A team, of course, who won here just a few weeks ago at the RDS, the Glasgow Warriors. That will be a fascinating final. And it's going to be another trophy this season for Munster, and Leinster will have an opportunity to Use it. find a silver lining after the disappointment of last week in the European decider. Two minutes to go, ten points for margin. Yeah, you're, looking at, you're looking at the difference between the sides today and this precious little difference. Both sides struggle in set piece at line out and scrum time. There was 50-50s all over the place. But the ultimate difference is Leinster had a defensive system that Munster were unable to really unlock. And at times, there was precious few opportunities for Leinster as well. But their ability and their skill set in pods of three to be able to ask questions of the red jersey defenders. Sean, in that moment in time, when multiple phases brought the Leinster front row into pass-pass score... And apart from that, it was maybe how to beat the opposite defence. And maybe that's the that's the difference between the sides today. Yeah, I can I add to that as well a little bit that Leinster's ability to break the gain line and get those four or five metres in behind at crucial moments meant that they were on the front foot. And that was the difference for the Leinster's ability to score that try. And Munster, when they were in, and this that's probably the one or two players that their Munster are missing in their squad. So for all of CJ's um, incredible um attributes they just need that dyna dynamism a Jack Conan somebody who can just slip a tackle go over and get that quick ball CJ's it's very attritional and it's quite uh, can be a little bit uh, can be a little slow medium ball someone like Jack um, whoever that is for Munster whoever they find and when they get that ability to create quick ball that's when this team will look really really di different well, and the team selection of course as well having CJ Stander at seven in the first instance. Mm. He certainly looks more comfortable in the number eight jersey. No, it's fine. A quick shot of the uh, current Crouch. Monster coaching ticket. Of course, it's the end of the road Five. for Felix Jones Set. and, and hold, Jerry hold. Flannery after tonight's game. It's an interesting summer ahead for no. Monster. No, time's off. Yeah. Well, you need to get your shoulders have their inquests and inquisitions as to why today didn't turn Time's out off. any better than it did. They've given their all. You cannot fault them one iota for that, but again, they've come up short. Oh, yeah, good tight. 11 years and counting for a win against Leinster at the RDS in Dublin. Time back on. And it's another semi final defeat. It's going to be five out of five away from home down the years for Munster, and they've lost them all. Set and hold. Hold. Talk about the value, the premium the attached to that home semi final. Give it it's absolutely huge. Ball's available and use it. Ball's there. And here come Leinster potentially with Lowe looking to stand up to it. And James Lowe puts the icing on the kick. The defending champions are on their way to Celtic Park in Glasgow next week. And it's James Lowe who dots down in the corner. He seldom goes 80 minutes in a Munster match without having a say for Leinster and he finished that exquisitely certainly when you've got a set piece that provides any form of a platform that gets the ball to this guy's hands he's almost unstoppable and again just creating mismatches and that's probably what Leinster have been trying to do um, across the across the day just to get the ball into their game game breakers simple hands that's just that's just 10 to 10 to 12, 8 to the 8 to the open side wing, and give him a one-on-one -on -one with the 15. And when you've got this guy in your armory, it can be just as simple as that. Right on 80 minutes. James Lowe driving home the Lancaster advantage. So many of these games between Leinster and Munster in recent times have come down to a, a single point or a single score and it was very, very tight for a long, long passage of this game up to that Sean Cronin try which gave Leinster breathing space at 17-9. And it's going to look on paper like a rather facile, comprehensive win.
It's been anything but. It's been attritional, it's been tight, it's been physical, but Lancer have found a way to breach that Munster rear guard on two occasions. Munster couldn't do that to Lancer. It's the end of the road for this Munster team this season. And it's Leinster who will march on to that final in seven days' time in Glasgow against the Warriors. They have beaten their interprovincial rivals once again in the semi-final at the RDS. And they will have a big, big say in the destination of the trophy as they defend their title against Dave Rennie's Warriors in Glasgow at Celtic Park next week. Not to be once again for... Chris Farrell and his Munster teammates. Lancer have Munster's number once again. Two tries in the match from Sean Cronin and James Lowe. And four out of four from the boot of Ross Byrne. Just three penalties to show for their efforts from Joey Carberry. Leaves the final score at the RDS. Lancer 24, Munster 9.